so hot in here. Ooh, that was nice and refreshing. And since I want to stay on the topic of heat and refreshing, this week we are going to draw an ice cream truck. But obviously I will want to put my own spin on it. So let's make it a floating ice cream truck. Well, not really like a truck, more like a spaceship in this case. So one of my main inspirations for this piece was uh, Connor Fawcett. I hope that's the correct way of uh, saying his name. I love his wiggly, playful lines. And I have this particular painting of his in my Pinterest Cool Styles inspiration board that I keep on coming back to. I wanted to draw something where you can see the heat and somehow in this image of his I really felt like being out in the field on a hot summer day. So how nice it would be if an ice cream truck or ship would float down and help people chill down a bit. And for some reason I decided to draw an Autodesk sketchbook since I haven't used it in a while, especially not on the iPad. Anyways, that is not what I want to talk about in this video, it's also not what the title of the video is. I got this question asked of me quite often. How much do you have to draw before you get to your level? Or how much time do I have to put in before I get to a professional level? And that is a very interesting question for me because hearing that it doesn't bring an answer to my mind. Instead, it makes me want to ask a couple of questions on my own. What is your motivation behind wanting to learn to draw? Or simply put, why do you want to learn to draw? I would like to dive just a little bit deeper into that first question because the word motivation is fundamental in understanding why we do the things that we do. One of the theories states that we have two main approaches to motivation, intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation, being from the inside, is doing things for the inherent satisfaction, not for some external reward or specific goal that we can achieve. We like the challenge of the activity, the opportunity to learn new things and the fun it brings with it. Extrinsic motivation, or coming from the outside, is doing things for an expected result that can be immediate but also something down the line where we can expect the desired outcome of an action. Neither of these approaches are good or bad, they are just different. As young children, we are very much intrinsically motivated to do things. We explore and find out new things on a daily basis. We mostly do things because they are fun. Things start to change when we get to school and when we have to learn a lot of new things that we might not be interested in. You need to learn something by heart because only that way will you get a good grade that will make your parents happy. You might still have your favorite classes, arts for example, where you feel like you're not putting in any effort yet you are getting good grades, but as you advance along the years, the more extrinsic motivations will creep into your decision process. Having touched on arts as an intrinsic motivation source before, it is important to mention that not all intrinsic motivation is the same. Different people get enjoyment out of different things, so something that is inherently fun for me might be boring or absolutely uninteresting for someone else. Let's stick with art classes. As a kid, I actually didn't care about art because it was mostly painting with watercolor or some sort of weird arts and crafts. I was always more into line work and drawing with pencils, so I didn't have much motivation to put too much effort into those classes. On the other hand, I enjoyed maths and chemistry, even went to different competitions because I really loved the challenge of solving these problems. And then as I grew older, that sort of faded because maths is just too darn hard. But the point, as mentioned before, is that intrinsic motivation is targeting different activities for different individuals and there are many external influences that can diminish or enhance our intrinsic motivation. But I kept on studying math and chemistry and many other things because I needed to, because I had many extrinsic motivators to do it, well, extrinsic motivations to do it. Parents' expectations, peer pressure, and societal expectations as well. Extrinsic motivation, unlike intrinsic ones, does not last. 
chemistry. I only studied as long as I needed to. I never took up a chemistry book ever again. Actually, that is for many, if not most of the things we've been taught in high school. I picked up many hobbies like rollerblading, for example, because it was cool and everyone was doing it. But I stopped a couple of months in because I just got bored of it. It wasn't for me. Extrinsic motivation is good to get you interested or started with things, but this type of motivation does not last most of the time. So are you bored yet? Don't worry, we are done with the dry theoretical talk. I just wanted to build a little bit of foundation for you guys to understand, question and maybe look into why you are interested in drawing or more specifically, the amount of time it would take you to get better at drawing. Why are you interested in the time it will take you to get better? Why is it important for you to know that? Is it an intrinsic or an extrinsic motivation that is pushing you to draw? I'm pretty sure that most of the people that you look up to in terms of art are intrinsically motivated when it comes to drawing. Many of your art professors, concept artists, industrial design sketchers, painters, and so on are intrinsically motivated to draw, paint, sketch. They don't do it because there is a reward, but rather they really love what they are doing and just want to share it with the world. When you ask someone like that how long it took them to get there, they will probably not have an answer for you. People who enjoy what they are doing don't pay attention to how much time it's taking up. Of course, they might be setting a goal for themselves like, I would like to achieve this level of proficiency. But most of the time with intrinsic motivation, the attitude will be more like, it'll take as much time as it will need. So you will probably not get straight answers out of people how much it takes to get there. Best example is this video where instead of answering that simple questions, I've been babbling on about all sorts of other things. The main point why I talked your ears off about motivation is because there's nothing wrong with either type of motivations, but I think it is important for people to realize what is driving them and to adapt their learning journey to the type of motivation that is pushing them. If you are not that passionate about drawing but just want to communicate with visuals, realize that you do not need to paint like a master or a draftsman or even a product designer. The simplest sketches can convey your message. Yeah, even stick figures. If you are diligent and a hard worker, then a drawing course lasting for a semester can teach you the basics of drawing. Just like with any other discipline, you can master the basics. Getting to the next step is where extrinsic motivation sort of fails and you need to have intrinsic motivation as well. After that semester of industrial design sketching, you will be able to sketch like any other industrial design student. But if you want to sketch like the people that inspire you, then there is no measuring how much time you will have to put into it. Growth is incremental and not always visible, especially for the person who is doing the growing. So if you are at a point where you feel you've been drawing for ages, but you are not making progress, rather than asking how much more time is it going to take me to get there or get better, ask yourself, am I still having fun? Why am I doing this at all? How can I turn drawing into an exciting and fulfilling activity again? And with that, I am done talking. It's been a while since I did these sharing my thoughts on things while drawing videos. And I must say this one was quite enjoyable. I also got a bit excited and read a paper on intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, which I have a link in the description and go give it a read. It's uh, quite interesting. I wanted to thank you for watching my video. I hope you liked it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button or subscribe if you would like to see more content like this. You can also follow me on Instagram for uh, more regular drawing updates. If you want to support me, there is a link uh, to my Gumroad where I upload process videos and sometimes original PSD files as well in the hopes of offering you some extra value. But as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.